Good day, folks. I just thought I'd give you a brief intro into the uh, operation of a heat pump, or at least one that's dedicated for heating only, although most do have the functionality of cooling as well. This one here, I believe, has only been used for heating. This is a uh, Keeprite model, or Keeprite brand. I don't know what capacity it is. R22 charge. Basic features are, well, in a normal air conditioner these would be your condensing coils, but in this case these are evaporator coils. There's two of them. Normally all boxed in with a fan on top. It's an updraft style system. Obviously you have your compressor. It's a large two-cylinder Tacooms built in America, along with a Tacooms receiver or liquid accumulator prevent any excess liquid making it back to the compressor and slugging it, damaging it. There various controls and contactors, which I'll go into later. And the most important thing is the reversing valve. That's what makes it a heat pump. It can divert high temperature, high pressure gas back into the building, into this unit here, where it will exchange its heat into the inside air, rather than diverting it to the coils which would become condensing coils and condensing it back into a liquid where the liquid goes to the in indoor unit and in turn absorbs heat from the air inside. This one here is fitted with a little piston type metering device for when liquid does travel through it or this one here is fitted with a TXV and a piston type bypass I've never seen anything like this before, so I might be wrong about it, but that looks like a piston type check valve or expansion valve, and that is definitely a thermal expansion valve. It has a uh, equalisation or, sorry, sensor bulb strapped onto this uh, line here which goes into the coils. That would be for heat pump operation. Because you would have, in a heat pump operation, you would have low temperature gas coming through here. Low temperature, low pressure gas. And it would be getting sucked back into the compressor via this tube here. The only explanation I can give it, it's a bit odd, I've never seen it before. But these are your liquid inputs or outputs. Capillary tubes. Coming out of a splitter. And normally the sensing bulb is wrapped in this tar and cork material to insulate it. These also have to be fitted with a bi-flow filter dryer. It means liquid can go either way. That's a Parker product. And this unit here is pretty straightforward. We have one large evaporator coil or condensing coil depending on what, what mode it's running in and a dual spindle blower squirrel cage it's also fitted with its own control gear capacitor for the uh, fan motor contactor step down or low voltage transformer and the control wires that go back to this unit here so basically when the system starts up and the compressor is running We'll have high pressure, high temp gas come out here at the bottom. It'll go up into the top of the reversing valve. And depending on what mode we're in, it will either divert that high temp, high pressure gas to the condensing coils and turn it into a liquid where it will come out through these little tubes, back out through the metering device, through the filter dryer and out to here where it is uh, evaporated back into a gas and in the process it will obviously absorb heat from the air travelling through and thus cool the room down. In heat pump mode that high temperature high pressure gas is diverted out through here to the inside of the building. It comes in here into the coil where the heat is blown off it it, it dissipates its heat into the air travelling through the coil and turns into a liquid. This coil becomes a condensing coil. Liquid passes through here, comes back out to here, back through the filter dryer, through the expansion valve and the metering tubes, 
and into here where these coils turn into the evaporators. So the whole cycle is completely reversed. And likewise once it comes out, low temperature, low pressure gas, it comes through here, there's a little slider will be sitting here, and it will go back into the compressor. It accumulates just to trap any unevaporated liquid that might come back. You don't want to destroy a rather expensive looking compressor. Electronics wise, they're pretty simple. We have main contactor for the compressor, main contactor for the fan, I believe it's a condensing fan, and there's a little auxiliary contactor and relays and other things for controlling pressures and this. Even though this one has its own contactor, there seems to be more stuff in there. I don't know exactly what it all does, but that's a solid state timer, fan, condensing fan motor capacitor, and just various terminal blocks for jumping power to one to another. This little control here indicates uh, the temperature sensor input as well as uh, a vacuum tube. Where'd that go? There. This vacuum tube attaches to the cabinet with the condenser fan on it. So when the condensing fan runs, the cabinet will be under a bit of vacuum as the fan's drawing air through it, and that will tell this module that the fan is running. If the fan is not running and doesn't run for any amount of time, it knows something's wrong and it will not run. So that has to be hooked up. If that fails or breaks, it could be a cause of non no startup. The only thing that's missing is the control transformer. The old one burnt out, obviously. And the other one is up here. That's a step down from 415 to, two, to 240 volts, not 24. 24 volt control like for that comes from in there. That's the 24 volt control transformer. So I hope you'll get the gist of it. This thing here also is your high side pressure control. It's got cut in and cut out based on pressure difference. It just regulates the uh, high pressure discharge pressures and shuts it down if it gets too high. Oh, well, thanks for watching folks, I hope you learned something. I still don't quite understand what the excess metering devices are for, but I'm sure someone will fill me in on that.